This is not your grandpa's radio. Radio height, without the antenna, is about 6.25 inches, leaf is slightly less than 3 inches, and depth is about 2 inches. Weight with supply battery is around 13 to 14 ounces. The radio is puny for a 5 watt unit, and grandpa would not believe all the features and capabilities this unit can handle. This grandpa started on a road that was basically a one channel railroad, that is all road power and cabooses were equipped with only AR-36. ICOM's method of user interaction to perform needed feature changes has much to be desired for the new ICOM user over the age of 50. To make seldom used radio modes or features can be quite frustrating for the new ICOM user. ICOM utilizes sequences of long and short key depresses of the few function keys to perform many rarely needed feature slash mode changes. Learning when a long or short depression of a key is very difficult for a lame-brained individuals like me. A few times during my learning experiences with the ICOM products, I suspected that the unit went into a continuous loop, brain dead, but my short depressions were too long and the unit was looking for a short depression of the key. This document will undoubtedly fall short of its intentions of making learning radio users' interactions with the ICOM product easy. ICOM's instructions are good, but not written in a manner where my mind would retain the information longer than my kidneys retained my last cup of coffee. The most important feature of programming this or any handheld radio is to ensure that any accidental momentary key depression does not cause the radio to change its operational RF channel. The manual lock feature utilization should not be critical to meet this goal. ICOM has a feature that can be enabled to lock the critical function keys after 30 seconds or up to 60 minutes in 30 second increments. The rotary switch can be included or excluded in this lockout condition. This radio is set at the minimum 30 second setting without the lockout of the rotary switch. Side 1 button is located above the large PDD bar button. Side 2 button is below the PDD bar. Side 3 button is below side 2 button. The top red button is the force narrow band switch. To unlock the radio to press and hold the side 1 key and listen for 2 beeps, the radio will toggle from locked to unlocked, or vice versa. Lock off or lock on will be displayed. ICOM has provided the railroad with radio firmware to access the AAR channels by the number keypad. This function is called direct channel access or DCA. Because of DCA, I suggest that the lock function take place at the lowest setting, 30 seconds. DCA is fast and easy. When radio is unlocked, to press the two-digit AAR channel number for the current wide mode, followed by the number sign key. If the receive channel is different than the transmit channel, split channel operation, enter the transmit channel digits first followed by the receive channel digits plus the number sign key. To exit DCA rotate the channel selector switch. Holding the top red button toggles the radio into force narrow band, if the radio is in the currently used bandwidth mode. Currently, you want to see AW before the channel name. When the division changes to the new format, you will be instructed to change your radio to the new narrow band mode. The radio will display AN before the channel name when it is in the new mode. Currently, radios operating in the N mode will have very weak transmit audio. The menu feature is the newest upgrade. Since the U3161S display did not label the P keys, ICOM decided to name this function as menu instead of shift or control or alternate. For this the U3161, it allows us to safely utilize the user set menu and to have access of user control for a couple of more functions by having a second bank, tier 2, of control. The P key functions are now labeled over the keys. Depressing the P3 key will call up the second tier, or tier 2. The zone selection should not have to be made very often, so the zone function is now in the second tier. You can have several zones or only one zone. To change zones, to press P3 when radio is unlocked. The second tier menu should appear. To press P1 and the bottom line of the display should blank out. To press side 2 or side 3 to scroll up or down the zone lists. To press P1 when you find your zone. Getting to the user set mode is a little tricky, but again these settings should very seldom be needed. Enter the menu tier to mode. Then depress and hold the side 1 button until it beeps once. A parameter should show up. It normally is the last parameter that you last changed. If it is not then briefly depress the side 1 button and the radio will scroll to the next allowed parameter. Note. It is unlawful to program a commercial radio without the permission of the licensed owner of such a unit. Many years ago the FCC's fines were up to $10,000 per day, per incident. I suspect that the cloning software may insert the software license number during the programming process. Besides, the railroad software is different than the standard software. And it is all too easy to make the unit a brick instead of a radio. 